Last month, 9 million renters said they were behind on rent, and now 2.8 million homeowners are in forbearance, according to an estimate from the Mortgage Bankers Association. So the last time a Democratic president took over from a Republican president in the midst of a recession, Joe Biden was vice president, senior reporter at Reveal and author of Home Records, how a gang of Wall Street kingpins, hedge fund magnets, and crooked banks of ultra capitalists suckered millions out of their homes and demolished the American dream. Aaron Glantz joins us now to talk about the housing crisis that we are facing right now. Great to see you, Aaron. Good to see you, Aaron. It's good to be with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So um, just give us the give us the lay of the land. How are things looking heading into the end of the year when we know that um, eviction moratorium is set to expire? Well, I mean, when you read the subtitle of my book about how all of these uh, Wall Street kingpins swooped in during the housing bust 10 years ago to buy up uh, millions of homes and, and take them away from families that own them, that was their life savings. We could very much be looking at a replay of that now. Uh, you mentioned 2.8 million American families are in forbearance. That means that they can't make their mortgage payments. Um, and one of the things that's also in that Mortgage Bankers Association report is that people are falling in and out of these forbearance programs. So the idea was that people would get in them, uh, fall behind in their mortgage payments legally, and then catch up. But instead, we're seeing people fall deeper behind. And as you mentioned, uh, with tenants, we're now looking at 12 million tenants uh, behind on their rent. And that not only impacts the tenants themselves who have to somehow catch up, but also their landlords uh, who are not receiving rent. Now, if you're a big Wall Street landlord, that's no problem. But if you're a mom and pop landlord where your whole life savings is in your building, uh, then, then you're having trouble paying the bank yourself. And so what we're seeing now is these Wall Street interests that really profited off of the Great Recession 10 years ago, uh, building up uh, billions of dollars in capital to swoop in and buy again uh, in this renewed time of distress. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm most worried about there, Aaron, too, is both the survival, of, you know, the survival of smaller landlords, but also that the way I see a bailout coming is it's not going to be, you know, bottom up, as in they're not going to give people who are owing, almost, what is it, $6,000 on average now for 12 million people in back rent. They're just going to bail out the corporate debt holders and the mortgage, mortgages, which is very similar to what we did uh, last time around. Can you just play out what that's going to look like if we go down that very likely political course? Well, I mean, you're exactly right that somebody is going to have to feel pain here and others will be bailed out. And the question is, who's going to feel the pain and who's going to get bailed out? So what happened last time is that what we decided to do was give money to the banks and bank profit way up. And at the same time, we had a wave of foreclosure across America. Nearly 8 million Americans lost their homes, uh, while the bondholders were, as you mentioned, uh, just fine. So now we already have almost 3 million Americans behind on their mortgage payment, even now, uh, before Biden takes office. So uh, the question is, where are those bailout dollars going to go? Yeah. yeah. And Aaron, one of the reasons that, you know, you're you're so great on this issue is because you first of all, you you've done all the reporting, you see the big picture, but you also see the human toll. What does it mean for people when they lose their home, when they face sort of long term housing instability? You still have a lot of people who never recovered from the hit they took back in 2008. Well, what happened in 2008 was you had millions of homeowners who lost their homes. Right. And not only where they lived, it was also uh, their life savings and their sense of security. So I'm talking to you from my home, where I'm lucky enough to own my home, a mortgage that I'm steadily paying off, and every month I make a mortgage payment, uh, I have a little bit more security than the month before. Well, those 8 million families that got wiped out in 2008, many of them are now renters. They're in that 12 million number of people who are now behind on their rent. So they may have gone losing their home, which they owned, being pushed to rent uh, years ago, uh, then spending more and more and more income on rent over the past decade. Now, with their savings exhausted and no bailout in sight, um, what will they do, you know, if, yeah. if they simply can't pay? That, that is what Joe Biden and his incoming administration are staring down. And uh, so we really have to see, are they going to take the same tack that they took 
when Obama and Biden came in, you know, uh, 12 years ago. Yeah, I mean, that's the real question, which is how, you know, how many times can people get screwed twice in one lifetime, especially over their over their homes, their livelihoods and so much more. It's such a terrible, terrible situation. Aaron, thanks so much for joining us, man. We really appreciate it. Always glad to have you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. California Congressman Eric Swalwell turns out he had a spy in his midst. Literally. Can explain that. Yeah, literally. Yeah. One rise and continues.